Say a warm welcome everybody today. Good to have you with us and a big welcome to all our campuses there in Pitt Meadows. Yeah, come on to Pitt Meadows and Crosstown Commercial. Come on folks, give them a big hand. Thank you for being with us today. Soon to be adding Richmond to that. So uh, we love our campuses. Yes, we're excited about that. Now, I know that last Sunday, what a weekend we had, Father's Day. All our campus pastors did a great job sharing that message on the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, Cheryl and I had a great time tag teaming on that message. If you happen to miss the message, go back and get the podcast because there's something about just focusing on the fruit of the Spirit. We've been talking about being filled, filled with the Spirit, and of course, we're known by the fruit of the Spirit. So if you missed that, I encourage you to go back and get that, and we'll uh, get going on today's message, cover some of the other things about that. Uh, I also wanna give a big shout out to all our life group leaders, all our life group hosts, Can I just say thank you? Thank you for every week getting ready, serving, being a part of it. You guys are doing it. And so thank you, life group leaders, life group hosts. Matter of fact, at all our campuses in here today, let's give all our life group leaders and hosts a big hand. You are doing it. Front lines. We love small groups. This is where the stuff often happens. Prayers get answered, encouraging one another having a barbecue together, doing life together. I don't know what I'd do without our life groups. They really have been a lifeline often. We talked about last week when we were talking about pruning trees you, you, and talking about how trees need to grow together to have fruit. And really, life groups are essential to have fruit. So big shout out to all our life groups today. Uh, we're gonna talk about understanding spiritual gifts today. And uh, you know, gifts are cool. Uh, I got a couple gifts for Father's Day, that was great. Uh, I love it when my grandsons now give me gifts and one day I have a granddaughter now, so uh, they're, they're just amazing. It's just, you just feel so honored when they give you a gift. Uh, my wife gives me a gift, my children or friends give you gifts, you feel honored, you feel special when you receive a gift. Uh, and then there's, as Jesus said, it's better to give than it is to receive. And how many, how many like giving gifts? It's good to give gifts, right? It, it feels good to give gifts because that's our Father's nature to give gifts. It's good to receive. But I'm gonna talk about something, another aspect. What about the person who delivers the gift? What happens if, let's say you had a a call from London. Pretend you got a call from London. On the other end of the line, it's the Queen's office. And they said, we have chosen you to deliver a gift to somebody in Vancouver. The Queen can't be there. We picked you for a number of reasons and uh, we have chosen you and you are to deliver this special package to that individual. Wouldn't you feel honored if you got that kind of a call? And you feel, wow, I I get to deliver a, a, a package for the Queen? And they said, you can even watch them open the package. Woo, wow, I wanna see the look on their face. Well, that's what it is with the spiritual gifts. God the Father picks you to deliver a gift for somebody else. It's not for you, it's not from you, but you get to deliver it. So let's talk about the gifts of the Spirit here this afternoon or today. In your notes, I have this definition. The spiritual gifts are supernatural abilities bestowed on individuals to flow through them at the will of the Holy Spirit, revealing the love and the power of God. I did a quick Google engram. I don't know if you've ever done that. And I just typed in Holy Spirit. And here's the results. So if you go back to the 1900s, people were pretty interested in the Holy Spirit. We took a bit of a, and that was, remember we talked about Azusa Street a few weeks ago? There was quite a bit of interest in the Holy Spirit and then slowed down. During the 40s, 1948, there was a lot of revivals happening, renewals happening, and so we see things growing from there. Decline through the 60s. I don't know what happened in the 60s. Maybe this was related to, there's a few other things that were being experimented with here. And, uh, but we had, a, we had a dip. And then, but look what's happening. And you can only go up to 2008. I tried er, later. So, but something's happening here. You see that? There's a hunger for the Holy Spirit. We could have other indicators, but I think this is a pretty good metric that there's an interest in the Holy Spirit. Now what this survey does, it, it, it looks for this word Holy Spirit in books and it sees this increase. So there's a lot of information about the Holy Spirit, 
but there's also some misinformation about the Holy Spirit. So today's talk is to help us understand clearly from scriptures about the spiritual gifts that we have through the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, look at this verse here. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse one. Paul says, now about the spiritual gifts. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of supernatural energy, supernatural power. Brethren, I do not want you to be what? Misinformed. I don't want you to be ignorant. And today, as a pastor, I don't want you to be misinformed. I don't want you to be ignorant of it. You can have no information and you'll never realize or experience the joy of delivering these gifts to others or you might do it the wrong way or be confused about it. So in a short lesson, we're gonna try and unpack some of this for us today. If you have the app, download the app if you haven't done that already because I've given you a lot of extra information on the app that is not in the notes. In there, I'll list the definition of all the different gifts of the Spirit that'll help you in understanding what they are. It's a great study just to go to the book of Acts and uh, read through the book of Acts a number of people have done studies on this. The gifts of the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, and when you look in the book of Acts carefully, you'll find 50 times that the gifts of the Spirit are in operation. I don't think that's an accident. And you can say, okay, was this one this gift or that gift? So it's a fun exercise to do. We don't have time to do that today, but it's a fun exercise to do. Uh, we said this a couple weeks ago that we don't judge a person's maturity or know they're a Christian by the gifts of the Spirit. We know them by what? The fruit, right? And then Paul talks to the church, I mean, talks to Timothy and writes to Titus, and he said, when you're choosing a minister, picking a minister, he doesn't say, pick those who've had a lot of miracles in their life. Pick those who've seen a lot of people healed in their life. That's not the criteria. The criteria is character. Do they pay their bills? What's their reputation like? How do they treat their family? In other words, pick them off of fruit, not off of how many times the gifts were delivered through their life. So. It's good to keep that point in mind as we go into this again. And as we're talking about this, let's also remember that when you choose to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, uh, Cheryl and I discovered this, that you make mistakes. And, but So don't worry about making mistakes because you will make mistakes. <laughs> you just learn from it and go on. And you say, oh, you know what? I, I guess that wasn't quite right. And you say, okay, Lord, I come back to you and help me to operate in these gifts. And if it's done knowing that it's not for me, it's never done so I look more spiritual, I'm the courier. Yeah. I'm, I'm the one who delivers a gift from heaven for you. And uh, you know, a lot of times when you're operating the gifts of the Spirit, you feel nothing. And the person's crying and weeping and so happy, and you're like, wow, you, you really are excited about it. But as the courier, you're, you may not sense that. So it's not about feelings, it's about faith. And you'll operate them by faith. Paul wrote to Timothy, stir up the gifts that are within. He's talking about stirring them up. You, you'll step out, you'll operate in the gifts by faith. We'll share more about that as we get into the message today. There's a, a list at the bottom of your notes of the nine different gifts of the Spirit. They're in three different categories. There's vocal gifts, there's power gifts, and there's revelation gifts. And I list those there for you at the bottom. But let's look at a couple things that we should know if we want to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, a couple of keys. Number one, understand, let's understand what, the Spirit, what these gifts are not. And so this is a quick review. Number one, they're not the fruit of the Spirit, obviously, because we've covered that already. Number two, they're not the motivational gifts. So in Romans chapter eight, Paul lists the motivational gifts, which are like mercy, administration, serving. He lists a number of motivational gifts. We're not talking about those gifts. Nor is it the fivefold ministry gifts. In Ephesians, it says he gave gifts to the body of Christ. And he gave what's called sometimes the fivefold ministry. And the easy way I remember it is by using my hand. He gave apostles, that's the thumb, because it touches all other four. And he gave the prophet, the prophet kind of points things out, so it's that middle, this finger. And then he gave evangelists, which is this one here. I'm trying to do this politely. <laughs> evangelists, because they reach the furthest. And then this is the pastor, because it's the, 
the finger that connects to the heart, so it has a heart for the people, and then this little finger is the teacher because it brings balance. And so you have this, and those are gifts to the body of Christ to minister to the church, to teach them, to equip them. But that's a different type of gift. You have motivational gifts, you have the fruit of the spirit. But then we have these spiritual gifts that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and chapter 12. So let's get into what they are not, a couple other things. They're, they're not talents or learned abilities. They're not dependent on your spiritual maturity. And this is good to know, because sometimes people operate in the gifts and they're very spiritually immature. So just because somebody operates in a gift, they're delivering a package, that doesn't make them really, that doesn't automatically make them mature. They should be, but no, they're not always mature. Boy, you would have liked to have been there. You, I, I would give $1,000 to go back, I, I'd give $2,000 if I could go back there again. I was in Lignite, North Dakota. You probably never heard of a little town named Lignite, North Dakota, right across the border uh, in Saskatchewan, going into North Dakota, just south of Estevan. I was asked to speak there. Sunday morning, I was giving my story, my testimony. I was working in the oil industry. So I gave my story in the morning. And then I said, if anybody would like to ask Jesus to come to their heart, please come to the front. This roughneck comes up the front. He's about six foot four, big burly guy. And he, and he accepts Jesus into his heart. And uh, I said, come back tonight. I'm gonna talk more about how I was filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm coming back tonight. So he came back in the evening. And afterwards I said, if you'd like to be filled with the Spirit, would you come up to the front? And he came up and uh, he, he stood in front of me and I, I prayed for him. And he, you would have liked to have been there. There was nobody behind him. He had no experience in church. He, 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 and he fell down. He just, as I prayed for him, he just fell under the power of God. Now he's big, he's strong. He's got no, he's never been in a Pentecostal service of any kind before. It's all new to him and he falls down and because and the Holy Spirit was there, he didn't hurt himself, he just fell down and, and I'm going, okay, what now what am I gonna do, you know? And he's filled with spirit, he begins to pray in other tongues and then he stops and everybody's looking because there's one church in town and all the churches come to this one church. So you had, every, you had a little bit of everything. It was a mixed bag because there was only one church in town. And they're looking at me and they're looking at him and they look back at me and say, what are you gonna do with this? You're the speaker. <laughs> and, uh, and then folks, he gives a prophecy. A prophecy comes out of your heart. It's not something you know or learned. It's, it's a word from God through a person for a group of people. And he begins to clearly speak to them there to put their divisions aside, that God's gonna do a movement through them. He begins to talk about what's happened in the past. He has, he has no knowledge of this, but God speaks through him as he's lying on the floor. You could have heard a pin drop as people began to weep and cry, and they were moved by the Spirit of God. He got up and he said, what was that? Because he, he, he didn't have any point of reference for it, but it was so supernaturally natural and God used him, was he mature? No, he was a new believer. So we, I sat down with him, explained to him what happened, and explained, I explained to the congregation what happened. But that, that incident sparked something in Lignite, North Dakota. God moved by his spirit upon that little town out of one little miracle. You see, no, it wasn't so little, but these, the, the gifts of the spirit always point people back to God. That's why it said Acts 1.8, you'll receive power when the Spirit has come upon you, that you'll be my witnesses. All that did was witness to the glory, the power, the majesty, the goodness of Jesus. And uh, it, was, it was amazing, but he, he wasn't, it wasn't based on his spiritual maturity. One example of many that we could use. The, the gifts are not an option for the church. God wants the gifts to be in the church. And Paul goes to lengths to say, but it should be done decently, it should be done in order. And there's good wisdom in that. Uh, the second point in your notes there is that we're, we're to earnestly desire them. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 says, let love be your highest goal. Would you say that our, here today at all our campuses? Let love be your highest goal. But you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. 
And you say, well, what is that? In your notes again, I'll, I'll give you some more information about that. I'll give you seven questions to ask is how, to, how do I judge a prophecy if it's right or not? So in your notes, I give you some more information. I think that might be on the app, but there's more information about that on the app of how to discern prophecy. Uh, you know, with the gifts of the Spirit, sometimes you'll have, the gifts will combine. You'll have more than one gift in operation. And uh, they'll, they'll combine together. I was in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. I'm, I'm telling you Saskatchewan stories today. So there you go, Prairie Stars. In Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And uh, big shout out to Moose Jaw. My son and daughter love Moose Jaw, so yay, Moose Jaw. Uh, anyhow, I was in Moose Jaw a number of years ago. Gave my, I was telling my story and my testimony. And I'm praying for people afterwards. This woman comes up and, and, uh, and I go to pray for her and I ask her, what's the problem? She says, I'm, I'm dying. I, I, have, I have cancer. My, and she had visibly signs of this cancer. And, and I went to pray for her and, and, the, and the Lord stopped me. And there was this word in my, in my heart, a, a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is this supernatural word God will put in your heart for, for the present time. It'll reveal an, an event, it'll show you what's going on. And uh, so I, I just looked at her and said, who haven't you forgiven? Because the Lord spoke in my heart, I, she can't be healed because she's not forgiving somebody. Do you know unforgiveness will stop the, the power of God flowing into your life? Just go back to the Lord's prayer and when you, when you pray, forgive. And so she wasn't forgiven. I said, who haven't you forgiven? She says, my mom. I says, well, why haven't you forgiven your mom? She says, well, she died. I said, okay, well, she died and you don't forgive her. And I, th I, th I thought that was strange. I thought, you know, I thought she, but she said, no, I, she left a mess. And I'm cleaning up her mess and I'm mad at my mother. I can't forgive her. Even though she's dead, she's not forgiving her mom. I said, well, look, God can't heal you if you don't forgive her. Do you remember how Jesus forgave you all your sins? And she, she's crying. Folks, that was just one little word. All I was was a courier of something from heaven, and I gave that to her. Why was it a gift to her? Because it showed her God knew about her life, God cared about her life, and God knew what was going on, and he cared about her enough to show her what was a blockage and how to get free from that. I said, let me lead you in a prayer. She said, okay. So I led her in a prayer. She forgave her mom. And after I prayed for her, the second gift kicked in, which was the gift of healing. And that day, that woman was healed. There were two gifts, a gift of the word of knowledge and a gift of healing. And often they're combined together. I was just the courier. She felt wonderful. She's crying first, and then she's got tears of joy. She felt so different. She said, I feel the power of God just flowing through my body. I felt nothing. But why should I? It's not about me. It's about Jesus and about her. I'm just delivering the gift. Not just, it's an honor to do that, but that's my role in it. And she was, she was wonderfully set free. So, earnestly desire the gifts. Study about them, pray about them. Uh, study them, learn about them. Number three, everyone is given gifts to show who God is. Look at this verse, 1 Corinthians 12, 11. All these are the works of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So the gifts are for everybody. It's not just for a pastor or an evangelist, it's for a life group leader, it's yes. For you in your home, for you when you're praying for somebody. We're all disciples of Jesus, amen? amen. We're all called, and so he'll have times for us when he needs us to deliver a gift. I need you to deliver this gift. Hmm, I, I just have to share this. I don't know why it's coming up in my spirit, but it is. Sometimes you're in a meeting, when I, when I talked about this woman being healed, because there were other people that night there that weren't healed, but she was healed. And so sometimes people ask the question, well, why isn't everybody healed? That's a good question. God is, his name is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. I'm the Lord God that heals you. But what God did that night is he showed everybody there in the room that he was a healer. And so when the gift of healing happened, it showed people God is present and God is a healer. And so what that does, it helps everybody's faith trust God more for their own life. 
Because ultimately, the greatest thing we can do is have faith in God for our life and for our family. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So when you see the gifts in operation, maybe somebody has a word of knowledge or a prophecy. Hey, what about me? God missed me, He doesn't like me. No, that's not the case. He does it as He determines. And he'll do it in an assembly like that, or, but it'll always be to reveal the nature of God, to confirm his word, so that you too can believe God for that in your life. But it doesn't have to happen the same way. You can be healed, say, God, I, I'm praying and I ask you to heal. Sometimes it's a laying on of hands. There's different ways that God heals. But what it did that night is it showed everyone the nature of God, that God is a healer, amen. You know, there's a time in Acts chapter 14 where Paul is speaking at uh, a certain city, and uh, as he's in that city, he sees somebody sitting there and he has a word of knowledge that they have faith to be healed. He looks out there and he has this word of knowledge, that person's got faith to be healed, and he's a crippled. He says, you have faith to be healed. So that, that word's in opera, that gift is in operation. And then he prays for him and the man's healed, he's a cripple. And that's a gift of miracles not just a gift of healing, because there's a creative miracle that ha- it, it, to put all the bones back in place is a creative miracle. That's a gift of miracles, a little bit different than a gift of healing. So his body's healed, and they, they, they think that, okay, Paul is a god, because this happened. So we're, we're gonna worship you. He said, no, no, don't worship me. He said, I'm a mere human being like you are. I just was delivering a gift from heaven for this man, but don't worship me. No, no, we gotta worship you. They beg them, please don't worship us. That is a stupid idea. (laughs) We're people, we're human like you are. But we just happen to have God gave, allowed me to deliver a gift for this man, but it's not about me. And they said, no, no, we wanna worship you. No, don't. They they, they hardly can stop them from worshiping him. They, They put him on this pedestal. The gift should never put you on a pedestal. It should never put you on a higher platform because it's not about you. They're not from you, you're just a courier. Paul says, I'm, I'm just like you guys. And then some other people come along and they badmouth Paul, so now they're mad at Paul. They're gonna stone Paul, so they went from wanting to worship him and now they wanna stone him. People can be very fickle. <laughs> One day they love you, the next day they hate you. This is before the days of social media. And so he has to flee for his life, but what does Paul do? He comes right back, and now he tells him about Jesus, and because of that miracle, again, many people turn to Christ. So these gifts of the Spirit, this power of God flowing through an ordinary person, this supernatural ability is always to bring glory to Jesus, reveal who he is, that people can have this intimate relationship with God. Ultimately, it's power to be a witness, as we read in Acts, Chapter one, verse eight. Everyone is given a gift to show who God is. In your notes I have uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 11, where it says, each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it, everyone benefits, all kinds of things are handed about by the Spirit to all kinds of people. Isn't that great? I guess that includes all of us at all our campuses, everybody here. We're all kinds of people here, it's for us. The variety is wonderful. Number four, they are given for all to benefit. For everybody should enjoy it. First Peter 4.10 says this, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to what? Serve one another. Anytime you see somebody, it's all about them, oh this happened, God did this, blah, 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 just <laughs> take two steps back and say, nice talking to you because that's not what they're there for. The gifts are there to serve one another. And he gives us spiritual gifts that we can help one another. And they flow out of of compassion. They flow out of unity. And uh, I I wanna make that point here in just a bit, but uh, the next point is 1 Corinthians 12, 7, I wanna put this one more verse up there. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so what we can help each other. That's what they're there for. When we have a desire to help other people, serve other people, you'll find yourself operating in those gifts because it's not about you, it's about other people. Boy, that's good. Where am I for time? Time's going by quick. Say, let me just do this in here. I'm gonna invite the campus pastors up. 
campus pastors, come on up, and let's close with the last point and then go right into communion for there. Let's talk about unity and love and why they're important for the operating of the gifts of the Spirit. So they're gonna come up and then serve communion as well. Here today, let's, let's just cover this a bit. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, verse one and two, I'll put this verse up. You'll recognize this verse, very famous verse, 1 Corinthians 13, let's go there. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, but have not love, what, I, am becoming, I become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And what Paul's saying, because they, they used to go into their temples and they had a cymbal there. And you banged that cymbal when you went the, into the temple. You know why? Because they had to wake up their gods. Aren't you glad you don't have to wake up God? Yeah. And he said, you know what, that makes, that's just nonsense. Yeah. God, wake up, wake up, wake up. Clang, 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 clang. No, no. God is awake, we don't have to do that. He says, that's what, it, it sounds so off. And if you operate in the gifts without love, he said, it's a clanging symbol. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge and have all faith so I can remove mountains, but if I have not love, I am nothing. And when does he talk about this? After the gifts of the Spirit. Right after the gifts of the Spirit, he talks about unity, about the different parts of the body, how we need one another, and then he talks about love. In order for the gifts to be effective, we have to recognize the power of unity. That we're different. One is an eye, one is a hand, one is an ear. We need everybody. We're one body. I need you, you need me. We're in this together. Every role is important. And then also we have to walk in love. These are the things that make it really good to have an environment for the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation. And right before this, Paul's talking about the Lord's Supper. We go from Lord's Supper, gifts, unity, love. After he talks about the gifts, of, uh, about the Lord's Supper, in chapter 12, verse one, it says, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, one, it says, now concerning the spiritual gifts. When does he talk about the gifts of spirit? Now, after I've talked about communion, now let me talk about spiritual gifts. Because none of this would happen. We, none of us would have spiritual gifts if it wasn't for what Jesus Christ did at the cross for us. None of us would experience his goodness. None of us would have gifts. None of us would have salvation. None of us would have love. None of us would have this if it wasn't for the cross and what Jesus did for us there. Let's bow in prayer here this afternoon. Maybe you're here today and you're at that place where you've never yet received Christ into your life. You've never received his love. He forgives us, he cleanses us from all sin. He washes that away that we can have an intimate relationship with God. So would you pray this simple prayer with me this morning, a prayer to receive him into your life, to accept him. The Holy Spirit will come and dwell within you. He's already done the work, now we just receive it. So let's pray this out loud together. Dear Heavenly Father, this Friday afternoon, I open up my heart I receive your love, I receive your acceptance, the forgiveness of my sins. I invite you into my life, Jesus, amen.